Well, hello friends. Welcome to the Serenity OS update for September 2020. Now, before we begin, let me tell you about sponsorship. So the Serenity operating system and all of my content about it is always going to be free and open source. But if you would like to support my work and maybe someday make it possible for me to do this full time, then there are three donation options. So I'm on GitHub Sponsors and Patreon for those interested in making a monthly recurring donation. And I'm also on PayPal if you prefer making a one-time donation. And you can find links to these services in the description below. And as always, a huge thanks to everybody who's already uh, supported me um, somehow. Uh, your generous contributions have been a huge stress relief for me, and I am forever grateful to all of you. So thank you. Uh, anyway, let's take a look at September. So. It's been a bit of a mixed month, um, but we have a lot of interesting mixed things. So the uh, first thing that you might notice is that we have a new uh, text cursor or iBeam cursor. And I drew a new one to, I wanted one that would look a bit better on a dark background. So now we have this white one. And then after I made it, then Linus came and made it better. So thank you, Linus. And um, another thing which is very um, subtle, but um, our fonts now have a baseline. You can see it here. Uh, it's marked in a thicker line. You can actually move the baseline up and down if you want to. Uh, and the baseline helps us uh, with vertical placement of text. So it's just a little thing that I like this month. Anyway, uh, and let's go and look at File Manager. So uh, I've done a bunch of work on File Manager this month. One thing is that we now have the root directory uh, visible over here on the left-hand side. Previously, um, you couldn't go to the root directory, which was a, a huge flaw, obviously. Uh, but now it's here and has a nice little icon as well. And uh, we've improved the experience of clicking on an inaccessible directory instead of popping up the message box and interrupting your flow. Now we simply give you this view instead um, that, you know, you can't read that directory and it shows you the error, whatever it might be. And um, another thing in File Manager is that um, I've added inline rename, so you can actually press F2 uh, and rename files if you want to. That causes this thing over here to uh, invalidate and reload, which is not perfect, but, um, but the inline rename is pretty neat. And of course, inline rename works in all of the different um, view modes that we have. So that's pretty cool. Um, and actually, since we had a markdown document here, let's, oh, wait, crash. <laughs> Ignore that. Uh, we'll make one over here instead. Test MD. So let me show you something that Ali made. He was working on markdown tables. So name and uh, stars, let's say. And uh, of course, wait, I didn't, I haven't made a lot of markdown tables, so <laughs> I hope I'm doing this right. Uh, obviously, Ali gets five out of five stars for implementing markdown tables, whereas um, Sergey gets five out of five stars for the initial lib markdown implementation. So everybody gets five stars today. And um, it looks a little bit weird here with the alignment. That's probably. Um, a web engine issue. Let's actually check that right away. So we'll use the md command to um, turn that markdown into HTML and see how it comes out. So we can see that it turns it into a table and the headers are th elements, um, which I feel like that should work. So let me just open that in the browser real quick. Click, um, bring up the DOM inspector. And it's a TRTH. Okay, so the DOM looks good, but basically the, um, uh, the rendering of table header elements is not entirely accurate. So something to fix in the web engine. Anyways, that gave us a reason to, to showcase all of that functionality. So it's all good. Now, another thing that's new this month is we now track uh, logged in sessions. So you can see here, if I run the W command, we can see that I'm logged in in this terminal right here, running W. 
So then I've been idle for zero seconds. Um, if we spawn a second terminal and we run some some command like test.js, maybe with the um, dash g to garbage collect after every allocation, then we can see here that it's going to take a while to run. And actually, the idle indicator is apparently not working right. So <laughs> I need to fix that. Um, anyway. Um, Something else that's new is that I added SIG info, which is um, a signal that you can send to a running process to ask it to tell you something about the state. So I can press Control T here, and test.js will actually print out uh, how many tests uh, has, have passed so far, how many have failed, and how many have been skipped, and which tests is currently working on. So it's kind of a nice little thing, um, and I think we should add this to more of our programs so that they can you can press Control T and sort of get an idea of um, how progress is looking. Anyway, uh, and at least it disappears from W, but we should look into that idle time issue. Um, okay, so another thing that's new is we now have an NTP client um, that Nico wrote. So we can do NTP query and it will tell us um, a whole bunch of things, <laughs> but if we run as root, we can actually use NTP query uh, s to set the system time. So um, we had a pretty small offset, but anyway, that's pretty cool. NTP for for uh, network time, um, and then let's look at Hack Studio. So Itamar has been doing a lot of great work on Hack Studio this month. Um, two major features from him. The first one is uh, C++ auto-completion. So this is uh, Lexer-based. It's not uh, Parser-based yet, um, but it's still pretty neat. So you can uh, press Control space and it brings up these suggestions based on the partial token that you're currently typing. And it allows you to pick one of them if you like them. So very helpful and very neat feature by Itamar. And another one he also made is Git integration. So uh, if we click on Git here, it asks if we want to make a, make a Git repository, and we'll just say yes. And I guess we can, um, maybe we'll just add all the files to it. Uh, let's see if I'm doing this right. Oh wait, I have to plus them actually to add them. And here we'll make a commit, initial commit. Okay. And if we go out here into this directory, we can see that um, this actually made a commit. And the git integration is pretty nifty. So if we type something here uh, and I save, you'll notice that it pops up down here that we have unstaged changes. If I click on it, I get to see a diff uh, and I can choose to add it, commit it, and so on. So this is some fantastic work by Itamar on integrating uh, Git in our IDE. And um, yeah, so thank you, Itamar, very much for your awesome work on Hack Studio. Um, another thing, actually, that I could have showed you there is um, the text editor component now has some white space highlighting. So if you have unnecessary white space on the end of a line or trailing white space, then we show that with this annoying um, red pattern so that you are motivated to not leave your files looking like this. Uh, just a little thing that I did. <laughs> anyway, then let's go and take a look at the browser. So uh, one thing that you might notice here is that it says that this page loaded in 32 milliseconds. So this is using the uh, performance.now API, which I recently added to the browser. Uh, and if we reload, we can see that usually it's faster the second time. Um, I also added checkboxes this month. So uh, this is a input type checkbox. Pretty simple, but it works. Uh, some other things that are new in the browser engine are uh, post requests. So you can now send post requests um, with forms. And uh, iframes will now emit load events. Um, there have been a bunch of different CSS units added, 
by Luke. So thank you, Luke. And um, there were a bunch of bug fixes in uh, LibJS also. So thank you to Linus who did a whole bunch of them. And um, I myself worked a lot on LibJS this month to support multiple global objects because uh, we want to uh, go to the part of the web where people put more than one frame in pages, which is most of the web these days. So to to allow us to go there, we have to support each frame having its own JavaScript window. And um, I spent a lot of time this month on that. It's not very visible change, but um, it's, it's something that enables a lot of things going forward. So that'll be good. Um, and then uh, work on the shell continues. Ali is doing great work on the shell. If we bring up the help application, we can see that um, shell command language is being documented as it develops. So uh, something that's new in this month is match expressions. So it's sort of like a, like a switch statement or a case statement from POSIX shell but um, with a slightly more aesthetic syntax. Um, at least I think so, and I'm pretty sure Ali thinks so as well. So thank you, Ali, for working on the shell. Um, and I know it's not just the, the new match expression, but also there's been countless bug fixes and a lot of really nice improvements going, uh, going on. And I, I really feel like the shell is just more and more pleasant to use every week. So that's fantastic. Uh, and um, another ergonomic change for developers is that Paul has been um, spending some serious time implementing a new string formatting um, framework. So we have now something closer to um, the new STD format, um, which uh, it's not really visible here, but it's something that's very exciting because it gets us away from these old school printf format strings. Uh, so that's, that's exciting. Uh, and then in the kernel land, there's been so many bug fixes and stability fixes. And Tom has been doing a great job fixing race conditions and uh, various memory uh, bug fixes. And uh, Luke has also contributed a bunch of memory fixes. And there's been especially a strong focus on the system's behavior in low memory conditions. So that's something that we used to handle not super gracefully, and it's something that we're getting a lot better at uh, quite rapidly, which is exciting because um, it's really nice if the system can survive memory spikes. Uh, so thank you, Tom, and thank you, Luke, for working on kernel memory stuff. Um, and I'm, I'm sure there's a bunch of other things that I'm forgetting, but I feel like these are the major things I wanted to show you today. Um, and Last, but certainly not least, Luke also did a port of OpenSSH. Uh, I don't have it installed, but, um, but that's pretty awesome. It's always nice to see new software running on the system. So yeah, it's, uh, like I said, it's been a mixed month, a lot of different things going on, but a lot of fun things. And I'm really happy with the progress that we're making. And, um, it's almost like I can't believe how far we've come already, but let's see where we go next. Anyways, that's, that's all I had to show to you today. So thank you very much for tuning in, stopping by and checking out our progress. And if you ever want to chat, you can find us on uh, the Freenode IRC network in the Serenity OS channel. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm Awesome Kling. Uh, other than that, I'll just say see you next time.